Congress passed a big $3 trillion relief package back in March. But with the benefits of a package about to run out, Congress has been struggling to put together something new. Now, Democrats have been asking for another $3 trillion to extend and expand the benefits that have been helping people. And now Republicans have finally responded with something a little less generous. This morning, with tens of millions of Americans out of work, Senate Republicans are proposing to slash emergency unemployment benefits by $400, a plan that would cut that extra federal payment from $600 to $200 a week, with Republicans arguing additional payouts would discourage jobless Americans from returning to work. In certain cases, people were paid more to stay home than they were to work. And I think that's something that the American public understands. We're not going to use taxpayer money to pay people more to stay home. Man, I know Steve Mnuchin speaks like a ventriloquist dummy, but sometimes I wish someone would shove their hand up his ass and make him say the right things. Because look, it is true that some people have been earning more from these extra benefits than they were making at their jobs. But that's only because a lot of people in America don't make a living wage at their jobs. Like, I'm honestly surprised this White House is so against paying people not to work. I mean, they've been fine doing it for the past four years. Guys, if anything, going back to work too soon is what spreads coronavirus, which then makes it harder for everyone to go back to work. So the best way to go back to work is to not go back to work. If anything, the government should be sending everyone an HBO Max password and a giant bag of weed. It's the responsible thing to do. And here's the thing. You can always argue about whether it's good policy or bad policy to just give people money. I mean, it's good policy, but you can argue about it if you feel like it. But one thing that's raising eyebrows is that while the Republicans are saying they can't afford to give more money to laid-off workers, they are managing to open up their wallets for some way more questionable expenses. The bill is also coming under intense criticism for $1.75 billion allocated for a new FBI building, something McConnell said was included at the request of the White House. The president has called for the rebuilding of the FBI building in downtown D.C. to occur on the same plot of land in which it currently exists. And why that's significant is because the Trump Hotel is right across the street from the FBI building. So the concerns are that the president is trying to keep that property controlled by the federal government to prevent another hotel from coming in there potentially and taking away business from the Trump hotel. Yes, while unemployment benefits are being cut, Republicans have managed to find $1.75 billion to rebuild the FBI headquarters in its current location instead of allowing it to move. And all of this was a direct request from Donald Trump because Trump knows that as long as the FBI stays across the street from his hotel in DC, Nobody can build a competing hotel next to his. And you know, this is what's so frustrating about Trump. When you tell him you can stop corona by putting on a mask, he can't follow the logic. Oh, it's too complicated. I can't breathe. I don't even know. But then when he's working on a grift that'll make himself money, suddenly he can see the matrix. You put that one there, the hotel get it, carry the five billions of dollars. Like, I find it so bizarre that Trump is president, but he's still constantly pulling all of these scams. Like, what does he need the money for? The man lives rent-free. He only eats stuff off the dollar menu and his favorite hobby is staying inside watching TV. Trump could finance his whole lifestyle with lemonade stand money. Either way, at this point, Trump has done so many corrupt schemes, eventually he's gonna run out of lines to cross. Yeah, he's gonna need to seduce Mike Pence just to keep things interesting. Come on, Mike, I don't even want it. I just want them to talk about something else. Major League Baseball, America's leading metaphor for how far you went during a hookup. Just four days after the season started with a record four million viewers tuning in, it looks like the season is already at risk. With a report today that at least 14 players and coaches on the Miami Marlins have tested positive for coronavirus. And this is a real blow because the league had been trying literally everything it could think of to try and stay safe. There's so many things different about Major League Baseball this season. As the Pirates look to wrap up their first series of the season at St. Louis on Sunday. And check this out. Your home plate umpire tosses a player from the Pirates. So new manager Derek Shelton goes out there. And new rules. You have to social distance and mask up to argue. Corona's really changed our lives. Hand me my mask is the new hold my earrings. I mean, seriously, props to these two because this is an expert demonstration on what it means to take coronavirus seriously. Because yes, 
These guys wanted to fight, but they also know that coronavirus is waiting to beat both of them up. And if these guys can remember to put on their masks before a fight, you have no excuse when you're going into Walmart. Plus, it definitely slows down a fight when you have to Purell after every single punch. Look at Look at If you ask me, managers and umpires should have always been arguing from six feet away. Cause have you seen how they normally argue? I mean, look at that. This dude is literally inside the other guy's cap. He looks like a really insane dentist who's angry because his patient forgot to floss. Why aren't you going beneath your gum line? Now, unlike the MLB, the NBA has decided to reduce the risk of corona infections by forcing all the basketball players to live in Disney World for the remainder of the season, what they're calling the bubble. And as of the last round of testing, not a single player has coronavirus. So as long as the players stay in the bubble, everything should be okay. The only issue is one player decided to visit another magical kingdom. In the NBA, Clippers guard Lou Williams has been placed in a 10-day quarantine and will miss the first two seeding games of the restart. Williams was photographed at the strip club Magic City in Atlanta, Georgia last Thursday. Williams had been excused from the NBA bubble by the team to attend a funeral. Well, he tweeted on Friday that Magic City was his, quote, favorite restaurant in Atlanta, and he was not there to party but to get some wings. You have got to be kidding me. This guy was allowed to leave the bubble for a family emergency, but then the NBA found out he went to a strip club? How did they bust him? Did he come home with glitter on his coronavirus? And I love that his excuse was that he was only at Magic City for the wings. Not for the strippers, just for the wings. Look, there are excuses out there, but guys, there are tons of places you can get wings in Atlanta. Something tells me he was actually there for the breasts and thighs. Okay, who keeps doing, like, now, with the pandemic continuing to wreak havoc across the US, many people are wondering when President Trump will finally help his country get it under control. But from the looks of things, he can't even seem to get the virus under control in his own office. And breaking today, Fox News has confirmed that President Donald Trump's national security advisor, Robert O'Brien, has tested positive for the coronavirus. There is no evidence that either President Trump or Vice President Pence came in contact with Robert O'Brien, but this does make him the highest ranking U.S. official to have contracted the coronavirus. He recently returned from Europe, where he and his top deputy met with officials from the U.K., France, Germany, and Italy. Yep. President Trump's national security advisor has tested positive for COVID-19. And I love how they're saying there's no way Trump got infected. Of course Trump won't get infected. There's no way Trump has had any contact with his national security advisor. I mean, we all know that. Now, obviously, other staff members can get infected. But what's crazy is that apparently some of them didn't even know about the positive test until they read about it in the news. Yeah, imagine that. The national security advisor got coronavirus. They didn't know about it until they read it in the news. Sort of like the same way some people discover from Instagram that they're now single. Oh, cool, dude, look, Cynthia went to a wedding. Wait, why is she kissing the groom? Ah! So at this point, almost every other place in the world is doing better than the United States. In fact, there's actually one corner of the world that has been untouched by the pandemic. North Korea, South Korea's Wario. And yeah, I'm not sure that I quite believe that they've never had Corona, but in any case, North Korea has now officially blown its perfect game. North Korea is reporting what it calls its first suspected case of COVID-19. A state-run news agency says Kim Jong-un ordered a lockdown for the border city of Kaesong after a defector returned from South Korea last week, apparently infected with coronavirus. I mean, it's a little redundant for North Korea to order a lockdown. Their national motto is already, no one can leave. Welcome to North Korea. But still, I'm impressed that North Korea got one coronavirus case and Kim Jong-un immediately ordered a lockdown. Kim was like, we can't have corona killing North Koreans. That's my job. Now, one part of the story that's really weird is that a defector left North Korea, went into South Korea, but then came back into North Korea. But apparently there's a really good reason for it. Yeah, he didn't leave. He just went to South Korea for some chicken wings. For months now, the world has been dealing with the coronavirus pandemic. And the good news is that many places are doing much better now 
than they were in March and April. The bad news is they're also doing worse than they were last week. Two European countries who thought they had the virus under control are now seeing cases rise. In France, cases were up by a daily average of 850 over the last three days, a higher number than when the country eased its lockdown. Today's numbers do show COVID cases going up. Spain's infection rate remains high, with 47 cases in every 100,000. Italy and Germany's numbers remain lower, but also on the rise. Australia has reported its highest ever single-day rise in cases. Hong Kong has reported another record daily spike of 145 new coronavirus cases. Yes, people. After largely defeating the virus, many countries around the world are now facing the possibility of a second wave. It just goes to show you that coronavirus does not want to go away. Sort of like that weird party guest who won't take your hints. Man, it's so late. Whew. <laughs> yeah, and I gotta get up real early tomorrow. So, <laughs> I'll give you $100 to get the f- out of my house. Also, it's pretty wild how places like Hong Kong have so few cases and they call it a second wave because you could fit all their corona cases on a school bus in America, which by the way is Betsy DeVos's back to school plan. But I don't know what's more depressing, the idea of a second wave or the fact that America has handled the first wave so badly that it's gonna have to deal with the second wave at the same time. You know, sort of like when you didn't finish your vegetables as a kid, so then your parents saved those vegetables for the next meal and forced you to eat both. I told you, mom, I'm not coming home if you're gonna force me to eat 30 years worth of vegetables. It's not humanly possible. In fact, As much as every country has struggled with COVID-19, America is one of the only developed nations that never got the virus under control to begin with. Over the past week, the US has had 15 times as many new cases per capita as Canada and 12 times as many as Europe. And one reason why it's still out of control here is because of stuff like this. New this morning, Governor Cuomo is blasting a chain smokers concert that happened in the Hamptons because there was no social distancing. Video posted on social media shows massive crowds gathered shoulder to shoulder in front of the stage and no space between people. A church in Huntington Beach defies officials and holds a service on the beach. Hundreds of people gathered for the meeting last night. The group's website encouraged people to wear a mask and social distance, but as you can see this video, People were not wearing masks and they were definitely not able to social distance. Police in New Jersey busted a massive house party with 700 people. It took officers five hours to disperse hundreds of people from the packed Airbnb. It was advertised on Instagram as a mansion party with free booze, food, and a cash prize for a twerking contest. Guys, I can understand getting Corona because you wanted to see your grandmother or something but getting corona because you wanted to watch a twerking contest? There is no reason to risk your health for that. Unless your grandmother was in the twerking contest. I mean, then I can understand. You gotta support your Nana's dreams. You know what I mean, Nana? You do you, girl. Also, I understand that people need to go to church, but please, people, don't hold church in a tight, massive crowd. Jesus is supposed to die for you, not the other way around. So. Obviously, ordinary Americans should be taking this pandemic more seriously, and they could be. But in their defense, it's hard to do that when this is the guy who's setting the tone from the top. Overnight, the president went on a Twitter spree. Among the things that he shared with his more than 84 million Twitter followers, a doctor saying you don't need to wear masks. She touted hydroxychloroquine instead. That video has since been removed and flagged by Twitter as a violation. Dr. Emanuel here uh, has a large number of baseless claims. She has hailed hydroxychloroquine as the so-called cure for the coronavirus. The Daily Beast has also identified her as a pediatrician with a history of making, quote, bizarre claims about medical topics and other issues um, off and claiming very questionable things. Sex is a spiritual transaction. So when you're doing it by yourself, demons come and join you. When you're doing it in the right way in marriage, God watches over it. Okay, both of those situations are not ideal. I mean, obviously I don't want demons joining me in sex, but I also don't want God watching me have sex. Like, what if he's judging me? Come on, Trevor. I know I didn't give you much, but you can work harder than that. But yes, despite having the world's top doctors at his disposal, Trump has decided instead to trust a doctor who believes that people get sick because they masturbate and that vaccines are made from alien DNA. And by the way, 
whatever you do, please don't start running around saying that African doctors are crazy, okay? This doctor, who's from Africa, happens to be crazy. You can't use her to judge all African doctors. The same way you wouldn't want the world to judge America's presidents based on one guy, would you? So look, America has two choices right now. Limit the spread of corona by following the science, or listen to the advice of internet randos like Dr. Demon Sperm. Let's kick things off with the bad news, or as it's known these days, the news. America surpasses 150,000 deaths, the staggering toll, with Florida, California, and Texas breaking single-day death records. The U.S. economy shrank at a 32.9% annual rate in the April-June quarter, the worst quarterly plunge ever. The Labor Department says 1.43 million Americans filed jobless claims last week. It's the second straight week new unemployment claims have risen. Lawmakers are still at odds over another stimulus bill with added unemployment benefits expiring tomorrow. Talks are actually going backwards, not forwards. Two months after Democrats agreed on their plan, Republicans still can't seem to agree on what they want. Um, guys, I don't want to overreact, but I'm starting to worry that Trump's not going to make America great again. And I think I can see what the problem is here, guys. See, the economy is cratering, but the COVID deaths are rising. So clearly what America needs to do here is just switch the titles on these two charts. See, now the economy is up and COVID is down. Everything is fine. <laughs> you know, one of the most depressing aspects of this situation is how badly the Republicans are blowing it. Deaths are mounting, job losses are rising again, benefits are running out tomorrow, and they just started to come up with a plan like a few days ago. Like if your government can't help when things are this bad, then you don't really have a government. You're just paying people to watch this shit along with you. And it's bad enough that millions of unemployed people are about to lose the $600 a week lifeline that they've been getting. But in the meantime, the coronavirus death toll is still rising by a thousand people every day. And while President Trump has done his best to ignore the victims, this morning the pandemic claimed one of his prominent friends and supporters. Just into CNN, Trump ally and former U.S. presidential campaign, uh, candidate Herman Cain has died after battling coronavirus. Cain attended President Trump's June 20th rally in Tulsa and recently bragged about the president's Independence Day celebration, writing, quote, masks will not be mandatory for the event, which will be attended by President Trump. People are fed up. Look, regardless of what Herman Cain thought about the coronavirus, Every loss of life to this disease is tragic. And hopefully this will serve as a wake up call to a lot of people who shared Herman Cain's mindset. I mean, coronavirus doesn't care about your political party. It doesn't care if you like Trump. It doesn't even care if you believe it's real. It is real and it is deadly. So socially distance whenever you can and please wear a mask. Hell, you can even wear a mask sarcastically for all I care. Oh, look at me, I'm wearing a mask. I'm so much safer now. Yeah, that's fine. Just put it on. 